And when I died, oh, bury me beneath the western sky. That was wonderful, Shorty. How about another? Now, Rusty, haven't we had about enough? Oh, just one more song, Dan. I love Western music. <laughs> All right, Rusty. Guess we might as well. There isn't anything else to do anyway. Yeah. Do you mind, Shorty? Well, I don't mind if the rest of you don't. Yeah, okay. Let's Come, have on. Come on. Come on. All right, partners. You asked for it. <laughs> oh, my saddle's getting dusty. Ain't been you since way last fall And my bridle's broke and rusty Hanging more than the fine to come for a vacation, man. Well, Rusty, it seems to me you were the one who suggested it. Back there in New York, a dude ranch was just the place you wanted. Well, yes, I did, but I thought that southern Arizona would be warm. In the winter. Well, I guess it usually is. Well, all it's been doing since we got here is snow. And that's for two whole days now. I'm getting kind of tired of it. <laughs> so is everybody else, by the looks of things. <laughs> now, come on, Rusty. You wanted to listen to Shorty sing, so listen, huh? Yeah. Fresh and purple, bright with dew. Gonna miss the head of the wind. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it! What? Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't. Nothing but death, death, death. That's all you cowboys sing about. This is not wanting to be buried out in the prairie, and now you want to die and go to heaven. Well, I'm fed up well, with it. Well, balls and sassafras. Shut up, Christine. The rest of us like to hear them, even if you don't. <sighs> I'm afraid your wife is just a little bored by this involuntary confinement, Mr. Hanford. A bunch of people being shut up for two days are bound to get on each other's nerves, sooner or later. All I'm saying is I don't want to hear any more songs about death, and if I do, I won't be responsible. Shut up, There's liable to be a real death around here. Somebody's liable to get murdered. Christine, will you shut up? Well, snowballs and sassafras. <laughs> Dr. Danfield, student of crime psychology, has many times provided the police with a solution to a baffling crime. There's an interesting case ahead for the doctor today. We'll call it Snowbound. Three whole days of this. Dan, how long can the snow snow anyway? I don't know. I'm very well acquainted with sunny Arizona. I came down here to do some horseback riding. If I'd wanted to go skiing, we'd have gone to Sun Valley. Say, I think I'll go to my room for a few minutes, Rusty. I want to put on a sweater. Go ahead. I'll be in the wreck. Homer said he'd have a nice warm fire going. Right. Be waiting a few minutes. Hi, everybody. Howdy, Miss Fairfax. Hello, Shorty. Well, uh, now that your boyfriend ain't around, uh, Rusty, uh, how'd you like to pitch a little wound? <laughs> oh, now, Shorty. I bet you say that to all the girls. <laughs> you ain't a whooping. <laughs> That's what I get paid for. <laughs> yes, ma'am. My job on this ranch is to keep the ladies happy. Tell me, Shorty, do you ever get anywhere with that straightforward approach? You ain't a whooping. <laughs> yes? Who, for instance? Well, not that Christine gal, ma'am. She'd never give me the cold shoulder. I'd stay far away from her if I were you, Shorty. From all I've been able to observe, that husband of hers is what you'd call... Slightly jealous. Yeah, you ain't a whooping, man. You ain't a whooping. Oh? Did you already have a run-in with him? Well, uh, not me. I, I didn't. But uh, he did have a wrangle with that uh, Frank Parker guy. Oh. Now, don't tell me that Frank Parker's been rushing our fair Christine. Miss Fairfax, ma'am, I can see that I'd never get to the corral with you. You got on blinders. <laughs> you only got eyes for one man, that young Dr. Danfield. You know, Shorty, you ain't a whooping. <laughs> Well, I'm going out to my shack. Storm or no storm, them horses got to be fed in the morning. Time for me to bed down. See you in the morning, Shorty. And good night, ma'am. Good night, folks. Good night, Shorty. Good night. Good night. Good night. Shorty, could I see you for a minute? Out in the hall? Why, uh, I guess so, ma'am. You stay where you are, Christine. Oh, all right, joy killer. See you in the morning, Shorty. Good night. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the second act of Danger, Dr. Dan Field. But first... And 
Now back to Michael Dunn for the second act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. You and your cowboys, can't you remember your married oh, woman? Oh, please don't be such a bull. Fast, 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 and snowballs. Now, this is what I call a right nice good gathering. Everybody all warm and toasted. Oh, Just right. burning out. Uh, how about you, Mr. Parker? You, you seem kind of quiet this evening. Yes, sir, kind of quiet. Well, frankly, Mr. Clayton, I'm disgusted with this whole mess. Three days of having to associate with this bunch of morons is too much. In fact, I've just about made up my mind to get out of here. I don't appreciate being called a moron. Oh, you don't? Doctor. Well, let me tell you, Cliff Hanford, as a moron, you head the list. Why, you rotten... Hey, 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 none of that, none of that. Sasser, rice and snowball. I'm sorry. Lost my head, I guess. Well, good evening, folks. You all set to weather the storm? Hello, yeah. brother, and I'm yeah. glad you're back. This place is just about ready to blow its top. Oh, there's nothing wrong here that a good sunny day wouldn't fix. Oh, is that what you think? Well, maybe you ought to suggest that we play games or something. That'll ease the tension, hmm? Uh, any suggestions? As long as we have such an eminent criminologist as Dr. Danfield in our midst. Why don't we play murder? Murder? The, 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 the murder? Yes, I say fast and snowball. Surely. We send somebody out of the room, and while he's gone, we all decide on who's going to be the victim. Then when this person comes back, we give him clues, and he has to guess who it is. He goes out alone? Yes, dear. All right, I'm game. Now, how about you, Frank? Uh, might as well, I guess. Good. Hmm. You go out first, Frank. We'll let you be the detective. All right, but don't keep me out in the hall too long. We won't. Now, who's going to be the victim? Why don't you be it, Danfield? Who, me? Well, sure, Dan. Go on. <laughs> Well, that's okay with me. Anything to get the game started. Fine. You can come in now, Frank. Now, well, let's see. Is the victim somebody in this room? Yep, yep, he is. Is it a man or a woman? Oh, no. We're not supposed to tell that. Well, uh, let's see. I'll give you a clue, Frank. The victim is dangerous and naughty. Dangerous and naughty. Hmm. Uh, oh, I know. Uh, Danfield. Right. You're very good, Frank. Now, how did he get? Child's play, Rusty. Uh, Child's play. I bet Christine hmm. pointed at you, Danfield. Frank isn't smart enough to figure it out any other way. Oh, no, no, no. Not quite as obvious as well, that. Well, you can count me out. I'm sick and tired of being accused of everything from cheating at parlor games to making love with everybody else's wife. I'm getting out of here. And don't be surprised if you find me missing in the morning. I'm leaving this rain, storm or no storm. Well, snowballs and sassafras. Well, I think I'll go to bed, too. No sense just sitting around and fighting. Coming, Cliff? I'll be along in a few minutes. Well, good night. Now, I wonder how that guy did figure it out. Just a simple code, Mr. Henford. A code, then? <laughs> Sure, you heard what Christine said, didn't you, Rusty? Yes. She said the victim was dangerous and naughty. Well, I don't get it. What are the first letters in those three words? Dangerous and naughty? D-A-L. Oh, am I dumb? <laughs> well, sassafras and snowballs. Oh, so they had a code, did they? Well, I think I'll just go and talk to Christine about that. Oh, no, no, no. Don't worry about it, Cliff. It was just an innocent little trick. I'm sorry I even mentioned well, it. I don't like it. And I hope that guy does pull out in the morning, and on the way to wherever he's going, I hope he freezes to death. And I don't like that dame saying you're dangerous and naughty, either. How does she know you're naughty? Rusty, is this situation getting on your nerves, too? Well, I can't say I like it if I don't. Oh, by the way, Homer, you've got a bit of explaining to do, you know. None of your folders mentioned anything about this ranch being snowed in for well, the winter. You not This is just a flurry. A flurry? <laughs> What is it, though, when it snows? Well, now, uh, this year ranch is in the middle of the Huachuca Mountains. It's 8,000 feet high here. And I see once in a while we have a little snow. Yes, yes, naturally. It won't, won't last long, though. Sun will be out tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> then the snow will melt and everybody will be hot to touch I hope you're right. Homer! Dr. Danfield, come here quick! Well, oh. snowballs and such fast. What's the in that crater? It's Christine! Christine! Well, what's the matter with Christine? Come to my room, all of you. Christine has been murdered. In here, right here. Oh. Hey, hey, guys, the window's open. Close it, Rusty, quick. The snow's blowing in like all get out. Sure, Dan. 
Hugh, is that wind blowing? And this room is like an iceberg. Now, Cliff, where's the... On the... Oh. There. Oh, yes, I see. Sassafras. Stand back, please. We all have to take a look. I'd like to get the guy who did this. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cliff. She's dead, all right. Starting to cool already. Snowballs. Yeah, one shot right between her eyes. A shot? Dan, why didn't we hear it? Storm, I guess, Rusty. Wind's blowing so hard it'd cover up the sound of the shot. I'd like to get the guy who did this. Yes, yes, you said that before, Cliff. Hey, wait a minute. She's got something in her hand. In her hand? Oh, I didn't see. It's a letter. Let me see. Now I'll try to get it loose. Got to be careful. Might be fingerprints. Yeah, there. Yeah, I got it. Maybe it's a suicide note. Yeah, just a minute. We'll see. Yeah, dear Christine, going to get out of here. Can't stand to stick around any longer. Should wait and leave tomorrow, but your husband got wise tonight, so it's best for me to go. Hope I'll be able to meet the early train in the morning. It will take me to Tucson, and from there I'll go back home. Sunita is only ten miles. I think I can make it. Sorry won't see you tomorrow. Love and goodbye, Frank. Why, that dirty rat, I ought to knock his block off. Could I have that letter, Danfield? I'm sorry, Cliff. I'll have to turn it over to the sheriff as evidence. Homer, would you run to Frank Parker's room and see if he really did leave? Sure, sure. Sass the fastest mobile. Now, I wonder what happened to the gun. You didn't touch anything, did you, Cliff? I should say not. I know better than that. You came right to your room. Your wife was dead when you got there. Yes. Yes to both questions. You can see for yourself. You said yourself that the body already started to cool. Yes, entirely too cold to suit me. Oh, well, no sign of a gun. Well, that rules out any possibility of suicide. Maybe the gun was thrown out the window. It was open, you know. Yes, yes, it was, Rusty. Let's take a look. Oh, stop snowing. It's just blowing now. There's nothing out here. Just as clean and pure as the driven snow. Nope, not a mark anywhere. Yeah, probably took the gun with him. Uh, he's gone, Dr. Danfield. Uh, Frank Parker's gone. Then he meant what he said in his note. Yeah, he, he even took his suitcase. Hey, what's going on? Anything the matter? Somebody's killed your girlfriend, Jordy. What? Not Christine, ma'am. You ain't a woofing. What are you doing up, Shorty? I thought you went to bed an hour ago. Uh, I did. Uh, that is, I went to my cabin. I wasn't sleepy enough to go to bed. I was uh, sitting up reading. Oh? Oh, then, too, that Frank Parker guy, he come over to ask me just how to get to Sunita. Oh, he did? Yeah, I told him he'd better not try it. But the snow would stop, and he calculated he'd go anyway. Then you saw him leave? Uh, just about 20 minutes ago. Well, I hate to ask you to do this, Shorty, but you'd better ride into Sunita and pick up the sheriff. And if you should run into Frank Parker on the way, bring him back with you, huh? What if you don't want to come back? Well, now, Shorty, I imagine you could rope and hog tie him. Now, couldn't you? Mister, you ain't a wolfin'. Well, folks, snow stopped and sun just shining. Looks like a wonderful day. Yes, yes, doesn't it? Tell me, has Shorty got back from town with the sheriff yet? No, I ought to be here in a minute, though. I took a look around outside this morning. Homer, I could hardly believe that Shorty ever went to town. There wasn't a mark or a hoofprint anywhere. Well, the snow's drifting so fast, covered up tracks as soon as you make them. Now, listen, sounds like Shorty's back. <sighs> Boy, what a trip. Had to fight drifts all the way. Well, where's the sheriff? You, why didn't you bring the sheriff? Snowed in. I talked on the phone, though. Said he'd be out this evening. How about our friend Frank Parker? See anything of him? No, that, that's a funny thing, mister. I, I looked for him all the way in, and there wasn't a sign. Well, did you inquire at the station whether or not he caught the early train? Yep, I sure did. Didn't catch the train either. Nope. Nobody seen hide the hair of him. Well, it begins to look pretty bad for Mr. Parker. You ain't a woofing, mister. Looks to me like he shot Christine and made his getaway. Yeah, it sure looks bad. When I say it looks bad for Mr. Parker, Shorty, I don't mean it the way you mean. Rusty, you're insane. Going horseback riding in this kind of weather? I don't care, Dan. I came to a Jude ranch because I wanted to ride, and I'm not going to let a little snow stop me. Oh, well, I know better than to argue with you. That's a good boy, Danny. Anyhow, Shorty's already saddling me a horse. Oh? You know, Dan... I'm like Shorty. I think Frank Parker shot Christine. Well, there's something wrong somewhere, Rusty. I'd agree fully, except for two things. Yes, what? Christine's body. You remember our remark on how cold it was? Yes. And that letter. There's something definitely wrong about that letter. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Well, it just doesn't ring true. It's tilted, and furthermore... Well, you figure it out. 
Here comes Shorty with my horse. Oh, yes. There you are, Rusty ma'am. A good, gentle old nag. Thanks, Shorty. You're sure he won't buck? No, ma'am. She won't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, here, give me a hoof. I'll help you up. Oh, he's high, isn't he? Rusty, I don't think you've got the sense you were born with. Oh, she'll be all right, mister. Uh, just cut across by the corner of my shack there, man, and get out to the road. Most of the snow's blown off the road. Okay, ride him, cowboy. Here I go. <laughs> yeah. She don't do so bad for a city gal. No, no, no. Rusty can do almost everything. Hey, hey, what's the matter with that horse? He, he's gone loco. That old mare threw her in that snowbank. Rusty! Rusty, you all right? Oh, I guess so. What? I didn't come up here to eat snowballs. Oh, I can't understand it, man. Why, that old nag's one we used to teach babies how to ride on. Why she ever shied at... Unless... Unless what, Shorty? You know something, mister? I think that old bag of bones smelled a ghost. In a moment, we'll return for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield, but first... <laughs> and now back to Michael Dunn for the third act of Danger, Dr. Danfield. here, Shorty. If I was a little higher here under your window. Uh, there's an updraft here between these buildings, mister. Always piles of snow up against the buildings. Can't understand that horse shine. You must have seen a ghost. No. No, not a ghost, Shorty. That is, unless a ghost has legs and wears pants. Look. Sass of fast and snowballs. Damn, it's a pair of legs. Yes. Let's dig faster, Shorty. I think we'll find they're attached to something. No, bold and fast. There. There we... They've got them about uncovered, huh? Why, Dan, it's... It's Frank Parker. Yes. Sister, you ain't a woofin. Yep. Sure like you're as strong, stiff as an old maiden neck. Not only that, Homer, but here's a bullet hole straight between his shoulder blades. <laughs> Everybody but Shorty, and he's out in the shack like you asked him. The sheriff hasn't arrived yet. No, nope. ought to be, though. Almost dark already. Well, this is the way I figure this situation. Frank Parker was shot from the window in this room. But, Dan, how can you Don't be that? silly. This is my room, and how could Christine shoot Frank when she was already dead? I didn't say it was Christine who shot Frank, Mr. Henford. Well, I still can't figure out why you think Mr. Parker was shot from this window, Dan. Well, oh, can't you? Let's open the window again, Rusty. It's so dark out here between these buildings. Of course it is. How could anybody see to shoot anybody at night out there? I'll show you. Homer? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Dr. Danfield. Uh, all right, Shorty. He uh, lights your lamp. Sure, I'll light it. There. There, now then. If you'll all observe that shaft of light coming from Shorty's window. Why, Dan, it, it shines right on the spot where we found Frank Parker's body. Yes, doesn't it? Well, snowballs and such a fast. What does that prove? Not very much, I'm afraid, until we look a little further. Look out this window, Cliff. You notice that this is the only window facing Shorty's shack. There isn't even a door on this side of the house. Well, what of it? Everybody's whereabouts last night has been accounted for. Frank Parker was the only one beside Shorty who was outside the house. He having decided to leave for Sunita. Where were you, Cliff? Oh, I've already told you. I came straight from you folks to my room, this room. Discovered my wife's body and came right back to the front room. And you swear that you never left the house, didn't go outside? Of course I'll swear to it. Now, Cliff, you made the statement that it couldn't have been your wife who shot Mr. Parker. Well, maybe she could have at that. No, no, no. I'm rather inclined to agree with you that Christine was already dead when Frank Parker was killed. And if that theory is correct, just who would you say shot your wife? Oh, I get it. Parker killed Christine just before he left. Stopped in to see Shorty to ask the way to Sunita. And then, just as he was leaving, he decided he couldn't get away with it, so he shot himself. Committed suicide. 
Dixon. That's pretty good thinking, Dr. Danfield. Yes, yes, but uh, I didn't think it. So you believe Frank shot himself? Well, of course. That's the only way it could happen. In the back? Huh? Was he a contortionist, Mr. Hanford? Well, I, I don't know. Where's but... the gun? Well, well, if it wasn't Parker, it was Shorty. Uh, yeah, that's it. Shorty. I've it. considered that possibility, Cliff, but it's no go. Shorty wouldn't have a strong enough motive. Oh, no, I caught him making love to my wife. Oh, that's nothing. He, he said he liked me, too. Shorty's a lady killer, all right. That's what Homer pays him for, to kill the ladies with attention. Right, Homer? Mm, sure. No, the gal wouldn't come up here if I didn't have a few handsome cowboys around. That's a flashing snowball. Well, we might as well get this over with. Cliff, I'm accusing you of the murder of your wife, Christine. You did kill her, didn't you? Don't be silly. You couldn't prove that in a million years. Here's what I think happened, Cliff. When you came straight to your room after leaving the rest of us in the parlor, you found your wife reading a note. The note we found in her hand from Frank Parker, bidding her a fond and final adieu. But I didn't... You meant her to see that note, didn't you, Cliff? Didn't I didn't you? even know she had You a... read that note and flew into a raid, grabbed the pistol and shot Christine right between the eyes. How am I doing, You're Cliff? You're completely... Am not... I... Not knowing too much about the science of thermochemistry, you figured that by opening the window and letting the blizzard in, your wife's body would cool rapidly enough to give you an alibi. Oh, just a few minutes, perhaps. But that was all you needed. I did. didn't open the window. It As you opened the window, you saw Frank Parker passing through the beam of light from Shorty's window. Shorty was sitting up reading, you know, remember? Frank's back made a perfect silhouette, and bang, you got two birds with one gun, right? That's the way it happened, Cliff, wasn't it? Wasn't it? You're not. What's it? No. What's it? I didn't do it, I tell you. I didn't, didn't you? No, I didn't. Didn't you? I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. No, I didn't. You. Didn't. you can't prove it. You haven't got the gun. Oh, but I have, Cliff. I found it this afternoon. You couldn't have the, the, the snow. With yes, it. yes, the snow. You counted on the snow, didn't you, Cliff? I found the gun right under this window where you'd thrown it. Knowing you, as you did, that the snow was drifting so fast it would be covered up in a matter of seconds. I didn't. I... Oh, what's the use? Here's the sheriff, folks. The sheriff? Nobody's going to get me. Master man, sheriff, stop him. Don't let him get away. Hey, you, stop. In the name of the law. Ah, dropped him. Did you kill him? No, I just shot his leg out from under him. Didn't want him to get lost in the snowdrift. Well, that's mighty good shooting, sheriff. Mister, you ain't a wolfin. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. But first... Now back to Michael Dunn for the conclusion of Danger, Dr. Danfield. Strawberry Ron, oh that strawberry Ron. He says he's oh Dan, I love western music. Yep, real American folk stuff. You know that shorty's kind of cute. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Seems like he was uh, trying to pitch a little woo with you. <laughs> yeah, but I pitched him right out of his ear. Oh, this is wonderful. Storm's over. No more murders. I hope. <laughs> Dan, you're going horseback riding with me tomorrow? No, maybe I will at that. It's a shame all this other stuff had to happen. Yes, it's a shame, Rusty, but not unexpected. You see, when a bunch of people get shut up together for days on end, emotions usually get pretty close to the surface. Oh? Have my feelings for you been showing? People are, after all, animals, and you can't cage them up, not without disastrous results, anyway. Such as murder? Such as murder. Well, I'll have to admit you solved this case in your own inimitable style. Even if you were shooting in the dark. You uh, were shooting in the dark, weren't you, Dan? You didn't have any real evidence. <laughs> I, uh, well? The letter, oh, yes. I didn't see anything in it that would make a man commit murder. You didn't? You know, I almost forgot about that letter. Take a look at Rusty. Dear Christine, going to get out of here. Can't stand to stick around any longer. Should wait and leave tomorrow, but your husband got wise tonight, so it's best for me to go. Hope I'll be able to meet the early train in the morning. It'll take me to Tucson, and from there I'll go back home. Mm-hmm. Sanita's only ten miles. I think I can make it. Sorry, won't see you tomorrow. Love and goodbye, Frank. <laughs> I still don't see. Uh, Rusty, remember that little game of murder we played last night? Yes. And uh, the little code that was used by Frank and Christine to enable Frank to figure out the answer so easily? Well, it was the first letter of every word. I remember. Uh-huh. Now, uh, take a look at the letter again. 
going to get out of here. G-T-G-O-O-H. Well, that doesn't spell anything. No, no, it doesn't. But uh, take a look at the first word in every sentence. Going to leave tonight. Dan. Mm Mm-hmm. Go on. Meet me, Sunita, tomorrow. Going to leave tonight. Meet me, Sunita, tomorrow. Why, Dan, when you read it that way, it means something entirely different. Yes, yes, doesn't it? And there, Rusty, is Cliff's motive for murder. Jealousy and the breakup of his home. After all, Frank Parker was trying to steal his wife, you know. But how did Cliff know? Well, he heard me expose that silly little code. He didn't have to be very smart to figure out this one. Dan, do you know something? Hmm? What, Rusty? You are awfully smart. <laughs> Come here, Rusty. <laughs> you ain't a woofing. Sassafras and snowballs. <laughs> <laughs>